Good morning, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. We surely can rejoice in such a beautiful day where the sun is finally, finally shining and there is sky above. We really, really appreciate the sky ad above because it's been so cold and wintry the last few Sundays. So um, we sometimes don't appreciate the the highs until we have had the the drearies so this is a great day welcome to our service welcome to our service we want you to um, be a part be present with us today as we are worshiping the lord amen let us pray Lord God, this is the day that you have made. You made this day. It is unique for us. We will never have this day again, God. So teach us how to enjoy the highs and the lows. Help us to look for the rainbows in our lives. The variegated, variegated and multicolored sweet essences of you, Lord. We thank you that you give us yourself. Help us walk with us throughout this season. We thank you for all these wonderful things. We thank you for every family that is represented here, God, and every place to, today that is worshiping the Lord, whether virtually or in person. We thank you for all these wonderful things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face and i know that it's the presence of the lord sweet holy spirit sweet heavenly dove stay right here with us Filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Let us all greet one another with these words. May the peace of Christ be with you. Turn away from the calls of worldly success. Repent and turn back to God. Turn away from the desire to have what everyone else has. Repent and turn back to God. Turn away from greed and the race for power. Repent and turn back to God. As we enter Lent, may we turn back to God. May we seek forgiveness. May we seek healing. May we seek wholeness. May our hearts be renewed in this time of worship. And our opening hymn today will be found in the Faith We Sing, number 2237, 
as a fire is meant for burning. 2237. of revelation unveil your kingdom in our midst show us who we truly are in you expose the illusions that distort our vision deliver us from temptations that contort our living open our eyes in this time of trial that resistance may be the secret of our joy a sign of your shalom. Amen and amen. Me. Um, wherever you are, I know usually if I was in a, at church, I would say, I need you to clap your hands. So wherever you are, let's just clap your hands. That means I want to see everybody and I want to be able to see you as you clap your hands. We're going to go one, two, three, four. Do it again. One, two, three, four. God put a rainbow in the sky, a rainbow in the sky, a rainbow in the sky. God put a rainbow in the sky, a rainbow in the sky, a rainbow in the sky. It looked like the sun wasn't gonna shine no more. Well, God put a rainbow in the sky. One, two, three, four. A rainbow in the sky. A rainbow in the sky. A rainbow in the sky. God put a rainbow in the sky. A rainbow in the sky. Well, it looks like the sun wasn't gonna shine anymore. No, God put a rainbow in the sky. Say it, say it again. God put a rainbow in the sky. Yes, church, I said God put a rainbow in the sky. 
Oh, yes. Well, it looked like the sun wasn't going to shine anymore. Well, God, he put a rainbow in the sky. When God shut no in the grand, oh, 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 God, put a rainbow in the sky, oh, church, oh, yes, the sun grew dim, and the days were dark, I said, God, he put a rainbow in the sky. All oh, church, God put a rainbow in the sky, a rainbow in the sky, a rainbow in the sky. Yes, God, he put a rainbow in the sky. Oh, yes. Well, it looked like the sun wasn't gonna shine no more. Well, God, he put a rainbow in the sky. One more time, we said, God, put a rainbow in the sky, a rainbow in the sky, a rainbow in the sky. Oh, church God, put a rainbow in the sky. Oh, yes, well, it looked like the sun wasn't gonna shine anymore oh god he put a rainbow in the sky old testament lesson today is from genesis verses 9 verse 9 the Chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. Then God told Noah and his sons, I hereby confirm my covenant with you and your descendants, and with all the animals that were on the boat with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, every living creature on earth. Yes, I'm confirming my covenant with you. Never again will floodwaters kill all living creatures. Never again will flood destroy the earth. Then God said, I'm giving you a sign of my covenant with you and with all living creatures for generations to come. I have placed my rainbow in the clouds. It is the sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth. When I send clouds over the earth, the rainbow will appear in the clouds and I will remember my covenant with you and with all living creatures. Never again will the floodwaters destroy life. When I see the rainbow in the clouds, I will remember the eternal covenant between God and every living creature on earth. Then God said to Noah, yes, this rainbow is a sign of the covenant I am confirming with the creatures on earth. New Testament lesson comes from 1 Peter 3 verses 18 to 22. Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. So he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Those who disobeyed God long ago when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. Only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood. And that water is a picture of baptism, which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the place of honor next to God and all the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, you always send us a sign that you are present. Today, God, we're 
going to re be reminded that everywhere you sing, send us signs of your presence. Help us to look up and see you, God. Let Look up and see the beauty you have created, even in the ugliness that sometimes is in this world. Make us sensitive to you, oh God. Help us look around and see that the rainbow is many colored, is varied, but is still composed of you and your people. Help us to know and be reminded that you are the creator of us all and that you've given us a promise that is everlasting, that we will never be overwhelmed again by a flood water or by things that overwhelm us because we can look and see the goodness of the Lord in our land of the living. We thank you, God, for all of these things in the name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. Today, I want you to go with me because we're going to be talking about Noah and the flood. Let me give you a little bit of context. In this time of Noah, people were doing whatever it is that they wanted to do. They were basically one people. They partied like they wanted to party. They lived like they wanted to live. And they either worshiped or not like they were wanted to worship. The scripture says that God saw them and saw the evil that was in the people's heart. So much so that he regretted even making humanity. How horrible was, must we have been that God regretted making us? But it also says not everyone was evil. God saw Noah, that Noah was righteous. So he decided that he was going to wipe out humanity except for Noah and his family. So we see in this scripture, God speaking for the first time to Noah. And he says, I'm going to kill and wipe away all of the people on the earth. I'm going to send a flood. So I want you to build this boat, this huge boat, this ark, and I want you to take two of every kind of living creature that walks on the ground. And for creatures that are considered clean, I want you to take seven of them. And not only that, take food for all of those creatures and for yourself. I can imagine what Noah thought. Because at that time, there weren't huge uh, rivers and oceans where he was. But it says Noah was righteous. And so he ob obeyed God. And he, along with his three sons, built this huge boat. Now, there were jackhammers and power saws. So everything they had to do was by hand. They had to fell the lumber. They had to create timber and uh, piece by piece assemble this huge, huge boat. In all of this, in the scriptures, it never tells us how long it took. It never says how long it took for that ark to be created. But God waited patiently for this entire ark was to be completed and assembled. When it was assembled, God told Noah, assemble the animals, put them in stalls. Remember he told them to have enough food. So you can imagine what the people in the town were saying. 
this crazy old man, this crazy old man is building something and there isn't even water. In fact, uh, tradition says that it hadn't really, um, the, hadn't really rained that much in that uh, particular area. But then after the boat was finished, all of those animals began to line up, as the song says, two by two, male and female, and put themselves in the stalls. How much it must have taken. I can imagine the people just laughing about this crazy old man building this big old boat-like thing and all these animals that must have smelled horribly and then putting them into this ship. I could think they were laughing at him saying, you know what? <laughs> you know, you're not only going to starve to death, but all of those animals are going to tear you to pieces. And yet Noah continued until the day the ark was full. And we see the scriptures say, God shut the door to the ark. We see the scriptures telling, saying God said, in seven days, it will rain. In seven days, it will rain. So imagine the people still laughing and laughing and laughing because they have no idea what's going to happen. So Noah waited. He waited one day and two, then three and still no rain. There's got to be, he's got to be the butt of the, of the jokes. It still waited and nothing. Then at day seven, the rain started. Lightly at first, I presume, but enough that there was rain. The people continue to laugh because who's afraid of a little rain? Who's afraid of the things that watered my crops? Who's afraid for things for the season that we were used to having? But it rained. And then it rained, and then it rained, and then it rained. God had told Noah that it was going to rain for 40 days. So imagine with me that it starts to rain. And at first, the rain's okay. But then the rain begins to saturate the ground. And even as it saturated the ground, that's okay. We could go to higher ground. We can... Uh, we can build our houses. We can go up to the, to the mountains. It's okay. It's going to rain, but it continues to rain. I can imagine that people are not laughing now as the rain continues and continues and continues. At some point, we can remember even um, when it rained at El Ellicott City that the people began to be washed away. People would cling on anything they could to stop from being drowned. And then they would even become overwhelmed with that water. Imagine with me people looking up and seeing this big boat in a distance that was set on a pier, but now it's beginning to float because it's raining. Here with me, the people as they're banging on the boat, saying, let us in, let us in, we're going to drown, let us in. But remember, God had shut the door to the ark. And yet it still rained. And it rained and it rained. After a while, there was no more banging. There was no more screaming because the people had been washed away and still it rained for 40 days. Then suddenly there was silence as the rain stopped. The silence 
had to have been deafening after 40 days of rain banging on the top of the ark. It says, Noah opened the door to the ark just to notice that the rain had stopped. He sent a raven out to figure out what was going on and the raven had no place to run. He then took a dove and he sent a dove out and the same thing happened. The third time he sent a dove out and the dove brought back an olive branch. So he knew that the waters were receding but it still had no place to land. The final time Noah sent out a dove and the dove did not come back. So Noah knew at that point that the water had receded enough that there were land. And now we are where our scriptures were. It is where we hear God speaking a second time. And he's saying to Noah, I have made a covenant with you and with all the animals and everyone else that is on the, in the land. I will never again destroy all of humanity. And this is my guarantee. This is my title deed. This is my sign that I will not do it. I will put in the sky, a, a sign, a symbol that cannot be hidden, a rainbow in the sky to let you know that I am always with you. God told Noah, be fruitful and multiply. He told him that this rainbow will be with us an eternal sign. God created a semi-permanent, permanent sign of God's covenant. God is the only one who could have thought about creating such a beautiful symbol. You see, rainbows come, it is composed of the two things that is required for life, water, and light. We need both of them to live, not just to flourish, but to live. A rainbow is created when light is refracted through a water droplet. It is then broken into all of the cover colors. There is ultraviolet, which is anything we can't see, but is low, below the, the physical, visible spectrum. And then that is uh, uh, ultra red, which is above the visible spectrum. But all of those, everything that we can see in our lives is, can be seen by every color that is in the rainbow. But rainbows happen after storms. You see, there will be storms in our lives. We have just come through a storm, the biggest storm that affected the entire world. It was called COVID-19. The storm that affected us did not care what socioeconomic status, what ethnicity, what race, what gender. Everyone had the ability to be affected by COVID. It didn't matter before we understood what it could or could not do. It didn't matter who you were. You could be affected by this storm, wet by this rain. In our area in Maryland, we just had a storm. We had a, lot, a ice storm. People could not move. They could not get out because of the ice. My hometown in, in Louisiana, my daughter's town, home in Texas were affected by a storm that we could not have predicted. And yet we knew even with COVID, with our ice, with their cold, with their lack of water, 
we still had that promise that God would not leave us. There was a rainbow, even if we couldn't see it. I want you to understand, going back to COVID, that the greatest minds in the world had to work on our vaccine. They, they made a conglomerate. They took the scientists, no matter what nation they were together, where they were, and they pulled together to create these vaccines that we may try to live in something called normality. They didn't say, oh, you're this race, so you can't work on it, or you're this gender, so you can't work on it. There was a rainbow, hear me, of people who worked on this vaccine so that we might be normal. We were promised that we would have a vaccine and here it is. And what about the coal? And what about the water? Let's go back to Louisiana. Let's go back to Houston. There were warming shelters there because it was so cold and people didn't have water. If you looked at the warning, warming shelters, there were all kinds of people there, many colors, many races, just trying to get warm. You see, the rainbow that God has sent is still here today. It may not always be in the, in the sun, in the clouds. It may not always be where you can see it, but if you look around, you can see that this rainbow is always present. In our lives, there are so many people that don't look like you. I wish that we would all um, uncover ourselves so that we could look at ourselves in our, our video. You would see that you're, you're all different. You're all different. And this rainbow is what God has promised us to be. God has never promised that we would be the same. Some of us are, are hidden. We're hidden behind tragedies in our lives, behind storms, but there is a rainbow and a beauty there that can only be seen when we can see each, each other. Recognize that storms will come. We were not promised not to have storms. In fact, what's that song that says, I beg your pardon? Yeah. God never promised you a rose garden. It's not going to always be Sunday. It's not going to always be easy. Things aren't always going to be wonderful and sunshiny, but God has given us this promise that we will not be overwhelmed by the storms in our lives. We have one another, a many colored, many variegated rainbow we just have to see it, perceive it, and be willing to reach out to people. And it may not be people who look like you. It may be somebody who you never thought could help you. Or you may be the rainbow, the color in someone's life that is gray. You may be the thing in somebody's life that allows others to see God's glory. Let us today, this is a time of Lent. It's a time where we uh, have a self-reflection so that we can reflect God's glory, that we can look toward God's resurrection power. Help us and allow each other to be that mirror that mirrors this multicolored, variegated, rainbow that God has promised would always be. See yourself, see God in you, and let others see the rainbow that you are, that God may be glorified and be reflected in your life. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace and grace. Be the rainbow in someone's life. Amen and amen.
And please join me in our response to this sermon, which is found in the Faith We Sing, number 2238, in the midst of new dimensions. 2238. is now time for the offering but i wanted to stop for a minute i i got see in the chat uh box um that june is not fe feeling well so someone who's close to her if you could please just check on her after in the afternoon um she said she had to get off because she began to feel suddenly uh not well and this is what we do as community just somebody um just who's close to her, just sort of check and see how she, how she is, amen. And I will make sure that when we're finished, um, yes, it said no answer, she's, um, and I will check as well. Um, uh, she's been well, that's somebody we've been try, trying to keep in touch with. Um, and so with our community um, that we, um, 
need to make sure that we as a community are okay. Amen. This is time for our offering. We um, respond to God's word through our faithful giving. Um, our new web page, of course, um, thank you to, to Jim and um, he has done such a wonderful job. Our new website is up and running, which is uh, old www.oldaudubine250.org um, to donate. We have been blessed with people who have such, such gifts that has given to, um, um, to our congregation. So as you uh, would donate, you can go to that website and there's a donate button. It's very easy. And the donate button takes us right to Vanco. So we thank you for your offering. You have continued to be generous in your offering. And this has allowed us to continue to be in, in ministry with the community. And amen. Thank you all. And isn't uh, technology wonderful? We just got a um, we just got notification that Jean, Jean, uh, June says she is okay, just a little bit of a headache. So thank you for reaching out, Amen. And that for her prayers, people continue to pray for her um, as we are segueing into our prayers and concerns. Um, there are people who are in our, our prayer list. Continue to. Um, to reach out to them and continue to pray for all of them. Amen. Um, I have a uh, several of them that I uh, have been able to uh, uh, either reach out to or continue to pray. There is a young lady who have who has just um, who has just recovered from COVID and is still just come out of the hospital. Um, and so we want to make sure that they are. Uh, covered in prayer. Amen. Um, we are as continuing our virtual wor worship services. Um, and next week, we have a really special service as starting our um, with our 250th, our first um, special service is next week. So we're looking to that. And I'm sure that Cindy will um, will say about uh, what we're going to do in our 250th, our new one um, uh, service that is next week. So make sure that everyone is here and um, uh, and is a part of our service. Cindy, you want us uh, to say about what's gonna be next week? Our guest preacher is Reverend Dr. Terry Ray Chatton. She goes by TR or Terry Ray. She's a former district superintendent, but she's um, been a, a delegate to general and jurisdictional conference a number of times, a reflection of the confidence of the um, clergy, her clergy colleagues in the conference. She's a wonderful speaker, a warm hearted person. I knew her first when I was just answering my call to ministry and she could not be more encouraging. Um, she's got a couple of surprises for us, including a personal story, uh, some information about the, um, the church that we celebrate. Uh, she comes out of the Evangelical United Brethren tradition in Indiana, and her family goes back to the United Brethren in Christ, the predecessor denomination that was actually founded at Old Otterbein. Um, so we are excited to have her, and she is just thrilled to be our, uh, our inaugural preacher for this uh, season of celebration of our 250th anniversary. Please do encourage your friends to take part. Also, the video of the worship will be posted online. And um, uh, there will, as I say, there will be some surprises in the worship. So I won't tell you too much, but it would be well worth your 
um, your um, time to be a part of that worship together. So thank you for that moment, Pastor. Amen. Um, and, and we are so excited. We've been working on the 250. Well, of course, uh, Reverend uh, Cindy has really been, she's working her bones. She has no bones left. <laughs> she's working and so has Jim, y'all have, they have been doing outstanding things. So next week is really, we're excited about our kickoff um, special presentation next week. Um, we do have noonday prayer. One of our members um, actually uh, caught that the numbers uh, may have gotten transposed in it. Uh, so the number is 701 as opposed to 710 for the noonday prayer, but we are here. We had a good time in prayer last week. Um, so um, we're, I sit here and there are others who would uh, come and pray with us. It is a free service. You just have to dial the code. Um, and as you do dial the code, we can all pray together, amen. As you can hear last week, our first quarter with uh, organization is the Pro Bono Resource Center. Uh, Emily did a great job last week of telling us about it. You can look and read about it again at the at this website, um, and they do good work. and And by as the name says, it is free for the people who need it. Um, and so this is the thing that we are in mission, mission and ministry with. So as you're giving you can uh, designate a small portion to go to the Pro Bono Resource Center of Maryland. Um, we are still putting out a uh, mask, our angel, our minister in residence. Uh, Mimi is still putting out mask uh, for our citizens in need, uh, water and granola bars. I want to thank you all who are still uh, uh, giving us uh, granola bars and water and hats and gloves. Uh, as it is cold, as you can see, the need is still there. So we, we appreciate all of your gifts. Um, giving to uh, the church, it is something that is so easy to do. If you shop on Amazon, just designate Old Audubon in your Amazon smile. It's, it's nothing other than to look for Old Audubon Baltimore United Methodist Church. And then every time you shop on Amazon, a small portion um, is given to the church. It may not be much, but your five cents here and your five cents there really does make a difference. Amen. Next week, we're so excited. The study, The Fear of the Other uh, by Willem, William Willimon. I have definitely, I've actually, of course, uh, read the whole book, but I'm reading ahead. Um, for this week that is coming up. You don't have to have anything uh, other than if you can to get the book that it is on paperback or it's an e-book. Um, there will be a 20-minute uh, video presentation each week with questions and things to think about. So I'm more facilitating than anything else, but this is really something that you could think about process. And as we talked about every day, who is the other? And we find we can find out that God is really the only other and the rest of us, we have to figure out how to love each other in God's love. This is such a wonderful thing. You can see that the, uh, the it is at seven o'clock on Thursdays. The uh, Zoom link does not change. So I want you to share it with people so that every week, you, it, there is no um, limitation on the number of people that can come and um, take part of the Bible study. It is a more of a introspective type of Bible study that gives you questions. And it does have a little bit of homework next week. And the, the next week homework is to read the, the chapter for the next week and come with questions. So we're so excited and looking forward to our, our Lenten Bible study. Um, so that thus ends the end of the uh, announcements, unless there are other announcements that I have missed. 
Don't forget next week, Terry, T.R. Chatton will be with us and uh, we're excited about welcoming her. I'm seeing if you're going to unmute, Cindy. Was there something here? No, very good. It's now time for sharing our joys and our concerns. True together. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven. Hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done, done, done on earth, on earth as, as, it as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give us give this day, day, day our daily, daily bread. bread. And forgive us, us, us our, our trespasses. trespasses. Give us as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. us. Get us. us and lead us and not, us not, not into temptation, to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn today will be number 142 in the United Methodist Hymnal, If Thou But Suffer God to Guide Thee. Number 142. benediction wherever wilderness the spirit has brought to you walk in boldness as a beloved child of God walk in peace under the shelter of the most high walk in faith knowing Christ walks with you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen and amen. Have a wonderful day. Continue to pray and pray for Shannon and his Shannon's family, for um, people that have the need of prayer, knowing that God 
continues to hear prayer, even if it's in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day, if that person's face is brought to your heart, that's the time to pray. You don't have to wait for any particular time. In the middle of the afternoon, that's the time to pray. Have a great week, everyone. If you would, um, have us a few people just to stay afterwards in terms of giving people a, a virtual hug that we may be able to be one in community. Have a great day, everyone, and enjoy. Amen. Mm -hmm.